Hi, my name is Jackie Wyrock, and we're here with another episode of You and Your Health. And uh, the idea behind this program is to invite individuals to take a more proactive um, approach to their wellness. Um, we have, as a society, fallen into the go to the doctor and take whatever medication the doctor tells us to take and look for immediate results and that may work for some people but it hasn't worked for me and I explore other alternative areas for my wellness care and I encourage you if you're finding that the regular medical community isn't um, necessarily helping you to pursue other options as well and one of the practitioners who is very helpful to us here in the um, Vermont area is Mary Rogers. Mary, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you, Jackie. Now, you are actually based in Lebanon, New Hampshire, I correct? Am. Yes. But you travel. I do. And um, we, my husband and I, um, located, relocated. We lived in Northfield. Um, up until last September, so oh. it's a recent move for us. Wow! And it's um, because I need to be closer to my work. I work at the Woodstock Inn on the weekends, and then I have my own practice um, during the week. And it's pretty much a, a call for an appointment type of situation because I can be flexible with my schedule. Great! And I find that being able to be mobile because there are many that can't get out or won't get out of their own spaces, and um, I will do that to accommodate um, the healing. So that's, that's where it's at for me. So how did you get involved with healing? Well, what is crazy interesting, I think, is um, my brain injury. I had a brain aneurysm. I had actually three of them, but two of them were inoperable. Um, and one blew and I was put in a coma for three and a half months and I was on an incredible journey um, with what I choose to call heaven, what I choose to call love, which I choose to call God. Um, it was fabulous, um, but the brain can only take so much. So coming out of the coma and my daughter was the one who made the decision to keep me on the respirator. My brothers and sisters wanted to take me off, but they said, we will honor whatever decision you make, Danielle. And she talked to the doctor, and she said, you don't know my mother, keep her on the respirator. And two weeks later, I woke up. My whole right side was paralyzed. I couldn't talk, walk. It was like being in a prison cell where you could not escape anything. And wow. it was agonizing. How long ago was this? It was um, 17 years ago, the day after Christmas, but it feels like it's right here, wow. very close. I have not forgotten a moment of, of that agony. And um, I had to get as familiar with uh, the darkness as I needed to be with the light in order to do the work that I'm here to do. So. Wow. Yeah. Can you share with us more about when you were in the coma and what you were experiencing? Yeah, I, I, uh, as I, as I shared with you earlier, it's a, it, 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 I'm very protective of my experience because it's very, very big and it's hard for me to wrap my head around it, let alone somebody else. But um, the brain can only deal with so much. And I think a lot of the near-death experience for me came after I came out and I retrieved many, 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 um, many things that I didn't have in my back pocket when I opened my eyes. What do you mean? Um, the brain, if, if, if there's too much stimulus or too much that, um, that happens for an individual, the brain stops, like a car accident. Somebody says, well, I you know, rolled 50 times and my head was smashed and this, that, and do you remember any of it? No. Can you remember it and bring it forward and trace it back? Absolutely. Wow. So 
you think about murders, you think about rapes, you think about just the horrific things that people go through. Your brain, this is what gives me, makes me feel like, okay, I can deal with this situation, is that the brain shuts off when the worst of the worst is happening. Like somebody's being murdered or raped or whatever, and the brain goes, I'm going to be not available for remembering this. It is too over the top. Wow. So it's been my journey. It's the way it's kind of worked for me. And um, I've talked to many, many and worked with many people who said, I don't remember when that happened to me. I don't know exactly what it was. People have asked me, did you feel, could you feel anything? And I said, if I were to trace it back, just memory wise, it was as though there was a gun pointed at my head and the bullet went off. Do I know exactly how that feels? No, but if I describe it to you, you can kind of go, that must have hurt. I'm sure it did at the time, but I can't retrieve that wow. and bring it forward. So that's what gives me a bit of peace when, I, when I'm working with people, is that this brain is so complex. We're hardwired to survive. We just are. And uh, I lived in a transitional home for a year and I was with other injured, brain injured people in this home who had suffered far less and will be dependent the rest of their lives on someone else helping them eat, helping them shower, helping them get to bed, wake up. That, that is not my experience at all. I have a full life. You sound like you've had a miraculous recovery. Absolutely. I'm not supposed to be here. Clearly you are. <laughs> <laughs> I am here. Yes. So in this near-death experience, mm -hmm. you talked about being with love. Oh my God. Yes. I want to hear more about that. One of the first things that happened that I recall is there was an absolute um, uh, separation of my physical body and my spirit self and that was very painful there was actual pain involved in the, the splitting of that and I remember I looked around absolutely beautiful surroundings and I went okay so where's the light where I don't see the light and I said am I am I dead and I could peek over felt like I was on a very high uh, mountain. I could peek over and I saw everybody else below me. And I was just an observer of that. I couldn't get to them, they couldn't get to me. It was very separate. What wasn't separate was the love. I've been raised a Catholic and um, the God that I bumped into is love and how that I felt that was like as I walked along in my journey, the breeze, the air felt as though I was wrapped in this unconditional, beautiful, no human words for it love. There's no human words for this level of love. Hitler is loved in this loved. Trump is loved in this love. So if I can do that and bring it back and do some work here on the earth, that will be helpful to people. And is that what inspired you when you? Well, I mean, it, it was a journey from, from uh, you know, it's been 17 years now, but you know, there's, there's been different parts. The first thing I needed to do was, what am I gonna do with my life? How am I gonna figure this, this position that I have been given? Because I'm, I, I really am not all that, you know, smart to sort of kind of throw some stuff together. Um, but what I experienced in my near death was genius. I mean, like I was a part of what Einstein and all the philosophers and the masters, I had all that information in my cells. Um, and so I said, so if that's true, then however it gets told is however it gets told and you just have to pr trust the process of it. So it's been completely and totally surrendering to the process of what this is, because I have no idea. So how do you do that? How um, do you surrender that? Um, every morning I do, and every night before I go to bed. 
Um, and part of it is really checking in with yourself because I'm back here with the rest of you people. Right. I suffer too. Um, but to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, damn, you do a really good job. You do a really good job with people. You've given your life over to this. And I have. I've given my life over to this work. This work is, uh, that's why I'm here. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm all of those things. But what gets me um, going in the morning is my work and the passion for this love and knowing that if you're supposed to heal, you're gonna. And if I can witness that, lucky me. So we're so used to, or we've become so accustomed to, uh, I want it now. Yeah. How does Good luck with that. <laughs> How does your work? That's why I think people are on drugs. That's why I think people are, I mean, we're not in a very good situation here on this planet. And people are grabbing everything that they can get their hands on to stop the mind, to stop the body, or to just forget what's going on, um, which is another thing that is going to be my purpose, and that is um, working with heroin addicts. Um, it's hit our family closely. Um, I just went and saw Dr. Gabor Mate, who is a world-renowned um, a physician who has dedicated his life to addiction and recovery and primarily heroin addiction. So I said the minute I, I open the door to that, and it's the truth, I'm getting all kinds of ways that I can connect with this community of people that, that need the help. So this is an area that's very near and dear to my heart mm. because I've been in recovery for 16 years, almost 16 years. Um, and um, I've, I've gone into rehab and I've seen people, um, as we say, uh, be spin dried, thrown out, and then they don't have the tools to live. You gotta and have him. how this doctor, I've never heard of him. He's phenomenal. Dr. Gabor Where Mate, M-A-T-E. He's from Vancouver, Canada. He's Hungarian. And he is probably one of the kindest, gentlest men that I've ever witnessed. Um, and his whole life is, is this. And there's YouTubes, TED Talks. I mean very easy access to that man and the way he's doing this mm -hmm. he's not he's not doing it from a criminal standpoint because that's what we're doing to addicts right we're putting them in jail because they're addicted right which really doesn't make any sense kind of ignorant totally when I when you sit and think about it it's like what are we doing yeah, I responded to something recently on, I know, they may have been, been Vermont Digger, where um, there's discussion about treatment of addicts and, you know, the, the mindset of just throw them in jail. And I said, would you put somebody who has cancer in jail? Would you put no. somebody who has diabetes in jail for treatment? No, they need treatment. Well, that man is who? who can share a story of what that's about. I mean, he, he's got a tremendous voice to give to. Oh, I look forward to No, oh, you will more. like it a lot. I, I, I'm blown away, so. So, going back to what you're doing, reflexology yes. and detox, tell me more about that. Well, I became a certified reflexologist. I studied at Kripalu, which is just a beautiful place. Um, in Massachusetts and there was a massage therapist who was an assistant to the reflexologist who was teaching and she had an ionic foot bath and she said after reflexology if any of you would like to participate in an ionic foot bath just let me know and you can do it for 40 bucks and I thought 40 bucks okay so after got in this foot bath and stuff started coming out and I was like oh God, I'm eating way too many carbs. I mean, I just started like blah, 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 talking. 
Really? <laughs> yeah. And the massage, her name is Gail. Gail looked at me and she goes, um, how do you know? What's, I said, I can't, I don't, I don't know how I know, but I'm just going to guess. It's the death card. I got to bring something back with me, because wouldn't that be ridiculous if I experienced uh, so much and I don't got no intuition or no clue about things? That's the only thing, and that's what drives this. Yeah, you have that access to I, all of yeah. that energy. And, and um, many folks will Google ionic foot bath and come up with all these things, and I never thought about Googling this. I just went, it's real for me, it makes sense. I would like to do a case study with heroin addicts and doing energy work, reflexology, and getting them in these detox foot baths because it's, it's profound. So that's really, I mean, that's really what I want to be doing. I'm most likely writing a book, and um, I would love to be able to speak around the country. Have you approached the um, Vermont legislature? No, I haven't. I haven't done anything like that, Jackie. This is the first time I've really done, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I've been behind a, a tree a little bit when it comes to my story and how it's shared. And it's, it's just a particular thing. And I don't know until something shows up. Right. You shut up. Shut, showed up. <laughs> <clears throat> and I mean, I, I wasn't looking and my friend Barb says, oh, and I go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to say something. I believe it is. And, and Dr. Gabor was last week, so it's like, oh, okay. Sinking together. It's all sinking together. So do you have any stories of any particular success experiences that you've had working with others that you'd like to share? Uh, I've had two women who doctors have said they cannot have children. Both of them have children. One has two and the other has one. Um, and that was through detox? That was through just work and energy and reflexology with them. Wow. Yeah. And I worked with a woman who had severe bladder infections every month. And I worked with her consistently every month. And they stopped and I said, you know, you're healed. You're, and she said, oh, no, I want to keep getting your work. I want to make sure they're not going to come back. I said, when you're ready to let go, you'll let go. So she's let go. No bladder infections. Um, a little boy. I'm just re-engaging with this little boy again. Um, when he was born, he had acid reflux. What's that? From your esophagus, it's acidic. Okay. When you're too acidic. So he was very acidic, and he was in the, the NICU. And um, the mom met me through her mom, who was working with me. And I said, OK. So the esophagus, um, there's a part on the foot where the esophagus is. Okay. And I said, have the nurses just rub slightly, because babies don't need deep pressure. Right. Just slightly right. do that. Just do it all the time. Whenever there's any kind of, when you're in with the baby, when you're with the baby, just do this. And she said to me that, that doctors, and like, it was impossible for him to, to be healed and well. And so she chirped a lot about me. I haven't gotten any phone calls though, so who knows? But her, her son is fine. She now has another son. Wow. And we're reconnecting after probably three years. So I'm, this, I'm really excited. So when is the reconnection happening? Um, it's happening May 9th. Not very far away Not now. very far away. No, I'm really excited about it because she's had another son and that's going to be just really good to connect with that. Does he remember the treatments? I say your cells remember everything, so I'm going to say yes. Okay. And are you working with anybody new now? Um, let's see. Normally, how I work is on a monthly basis, and I have a guy who I work with every month who came to me with, I don't even know what this is, but the padding on your, on your sole, mm -hmm. where your toes are, was all mushy. And he went 
to a, um, a podiatrist who said, well, he says, can you, sh can you put collagen in there? Can you just make it better? No. So he came to see me. He'd heard about me and got together and I started to do pedicures and work with him and do reflexology. Was in great shape. Then we moved and, you know, when you move, all kinds of things happen. And um, so our connection was, was uh, um, not as consistent as mm -hmm. it used to be. But he called me, he says, Mary, it's coming back. I said, oh, he says, I, I have to see you. So it's been two sessions and he'll be seeing me this month again. But it's two sessions, he's back. It's back. So. Wow. You know, so yeah, everything is a success story as far as I'm concerned. That's it's, amazing. Yeah. Even the shift of thinking one way and then knowing that there's a possibility for another is a very huge um, healing session as far as I'm concerned. So you, you also do sound healing. I do. And I've never heard that before. But I'm, I used to work in, um, with sound effects and, and with voiceover and, and whatnot. And I know that audio is, it can be very pleasing or it could be, be very discordant and right. terrible. How did you get into working with this? Well, um, my Reiki master actually um, connected being with a sound healer who um, is a teacher of sound healing in Escutney. His name is Zakaya Blackburn and he's phenomenal. And um, she said, we need to connect with this guy. He's gonna, he does uh, crystal bowls, Tibetan bells, and all kinds of, of instruments. Um, and so we went to his house and in walks this six foot one, blonde, blue eyed, Amazon angel woman. She was just, I just was like, OMG. Went up to her and I said, hi, my name's Mary and your name is, she said, Lisa. And I said, oh, what do you do, Lisa? And she says, I'm a healer of healers. And I went, Oh, so we'll be working together then. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was crystal clear. And we are on this amazing, amazing journey. Um, we've dipped in, dipped out, dipped in, and di uh, we're dipping in again. So I'm at that juncture with her again of, of um, her incredible dedication to truth and to wellness and healing of every being. And I'm talking a dog to a human. She's, she's, um, she gave me my life. She gave me my life back. Where oh, yeah. is she? She's in Massachusetts, Fairhaven. Her name is Lisa Murphy. Lisa Murphy in she, Fairhaven, Massachusetts. She's beautiful and she's kind and she's a phenomenal teacher. Phenomenal teacher. A healer and of healers. A healer of healers. and. She's helped me, she helped me kind of piece together all these bits and pieces of this experience that I had and make it make sense. I go, oh, so it wasn't crazy I, I felt or saw or, you know, touched this or what. She goes, no, not at all. There are some beings that just are like that. She's one of them. So, this is fascinating. Right? <laughs> so, how did you find her? You just just found uh, through sound healing. She was taking the sound healing. It was a seven month, one weekend a month course um, in Escutney, Vermont, um, working with the sound healer. And we did crystal bowls and we did tuning forks. And there was a bunch of us. There was like probably 15 to 20 people who were learning right. how to utilize sound to do it and to use in your work. And she just showed up and you knew you needed to. I, I just, I, you know, I get the talk in the back of my head. My sister, and this is probably crazy, but my sister Sue said, you know, you always talk about the voice of God, Mary. What does that voice sound like? And I, I said, well, if you're asking, remember um, uh, the, Ten Commandment, the Ten Commandments and uh, what's his name? Um, Charlton Heston? Yes. 
I said, I said, you know the voice of Charleston Heston in the Ten Commandments? She goes, oh dear God, Mary, are you joking? And I went, well, you asked. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. It's like I can have two conversations, as I am right now, in the back of my head and in front of my head, and I hear guidance 24-7 until I fall asleep at night. Wow. So I'm spoken to all the time. I really want that. Oh, it's a pretty crazy feeling. It's a lot of work. I don't know why I raised my hand for this, because seriously, mm-mm. -mm. <laughs> so, do you get to rest? Yeah, at night. At night, I'll get I'll get that little time. I don't dream that I recall, mm -hmm. and when I do dream, it's something biblical. It's something like, oh my God, I have to do something with this information. And it doesn't happen often, but when it does, I have to be very, very plugged in. So, do you get up then and write down yes. what your dreams are? And yeah. That's how my products kind of came into being. Tell uh, me about your products. Uh, my products are, uh, I use Himalayan salt, um, which now is like, it's the pop culture of like the healing, you know, uh, power of this salt is incredible. And so I didn't even know what Himalayan salt was. I'd never heard of it. And I'm having, I'm hearing, you got this, 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 this has to happen. And, um, I met a, a woman who I work with now. She's unbelievable. She is a um, an alchemist in putting together essential oils for mm. specific conditions. Mm -hmm. So I said, listen, I, I, I work with people with their feet and I work with the lotion and I work with their bodies. I want them to be able to take the scent of the experience home with them. So would you please come up with some sort of a scent for me to do that? And she did, and let me tell you, it's phenomenal. It's my signature scent, and people at Woodstock sells all my products. It's an unbelievable opportunity for me. So yeah. where in Woodstock? Or Woodstock Inn and Woodstock Resort. Woodstock Inn and yep. Resort. And this is in Woodstock, Vermont. That is. I love Woodstock. Woodstock is magical. It Woodstock is. Woodstock Inn is even better. It is one of the reasons yeah. that I fell in love with Vermont. Everybody says that. I must write that one down. Yes, you too. should. Because here's the deal. There's this thing called friends and family benefits. And if you want to get hooked up with a good rate. Yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> you need to ask me. <laughs> just saying. But it's, um, yeah, so Woodstock really has been the platform uh, for me to really explore and get into my work and to work with people that I wouldn't normally work with in a private practice. Mm -hmm. These are people from all over the world. Right. These are people from the city, from New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, Boston. I mean, they're up every weekend. That's fantastic. And I can build a clientele and have been building a clientele. It'll be three years this month that I've been there. So it's happening. And so it's been a perfect place for me to, to explore who I am in, in, in this healing world and having my products to be able to get purchased. Because man, I'll tell you what, me and my husband make those products in my kitchen right now. But you know, Ben and Jerry, come on, they were in a, and I don't know if I want to get that big anyways. We like doing it this way. Yeah. So, um, and that way, Energetically, I have a read on what goes in because there's a lot of prayer and meditation that goes into every single product that I make. How wonderful. And if somebody else, if this gets huge, and if somebody else is, brings their issues into it and mixes with that, it's not a good thing. No. So I say it doesn't need to get massive. If I get what I need financially to meet whatever I need, I can stay just the way I like it. That's wonderful. It's great. So Woodstock is huge for me. Well, that thank way. you so much. The time has gone so quickly. I know. But it's time to say until next time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Jack. And thank you, viewers, for joining us. We'll have at the end of this show all the information about where you can purchase Mary's 
um, products or experience her treatments. And thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, namaste.